Welcome back to Neural Intel. Today, we're diving deep into something that could seriously shake up how enterprise AI gets deployed. IBM's new Granite 4.0 nano models. We're going to get into the technical weeds of its brand new hybrid architecture and really figure out if smaller can actually be smarter and faster. So let's just kick things off with the big promise here, right? What if you could get powerful, capable AI performance, but slash your memory needs by over 70%? I mean, for any developer out there who's ever battled a VRAM limit or just watched their cloud bills spiral out of control, you know that's not just a nice number. That's a potential lifeline. To really appreciate what IBM's doing here, we first have to talk about the problem they're up against. You know, for the longest time, the playbook in AI has been pretty simple. Bigger is better. If you needed more performance, you just threw more parameters at it. But that brute force approach, yeah, it's starting to hit a wall, a pretty big one. And here is the technical culprit. It's called the quadratic bottleneck, and it's kind of the original sin of the standard transformer architecture. As your input gets longer, so think feeding it a massive PDF instead of just a short prompt, the compute and memory you need doesn't just go up, it explodes. For every time you double the input length, the cost quadruples. For anyone building real-world applications, that's not just a bottleneck, it's a brick wall for your budget. So, how do you fix an exponential problem like that? Well, IBM's answer here is pretty clever. Instead of just trying to shrink the old design, they went back to the drawing board. They've engineered a fundamentally different architecture that's designed to sidestep that scaling trap completely. And that brings us to the Granite 4.0 family. And what's really interesting here is the strategy. They're not just dropping one giant do-everything model on us. Instead, it's a whole portfolio of smaller, specialized models. The big takeaway here is that efficiency isn't just some feature they bolted on at the end. No, it's baked right into the DNA of these models from the very beginning. All right, so what's the secret sauce here? How does this all actually work? Well, it all comes down to a really cool piece of architecture called Mamba. And trust me, this is the part that completely changes the game. So let's break this down. Think of a traditional transformer self-attention, like a chaotic meeting where every single person has to talk to every other person all at once. That's what causes that quadratic explosion in complexity. Mamba, on the other hand, is way more streamlined. It uses a mechanism called selectivity to process information in a line, linearly. The result is just transformative. You double the input, you double the compute. That's it. It's predictable, it's manageable, and it's a huge deal. Okay, let's hit pause for a second for our neural signal check, because this is the technical detail that really matters. Mamba's memory usage stays constant, no matter how long the input sequence gets. Let that sink in. This is the breakthrough. This is what suddenly makes applications like retrieval augmented generation on huge documents practical on hardware you might actually have in your office, not just on some massive, expensive cloud instance. And the engineering here is actually really elegant. It's not a simple one-for-one -one swap. They landed on this clever nine-to-one ratio, blending Mamba layers with just a few transformer blocks to get the best of both worlds. And get this, because Mamba processes data sequentially, it completely eliminates the need for positional encodings. That's a whole chunk of complexity and computation just gone, stripped right out of the model, making the whole thing even leaner. Okay, so it's lean, it's efficient, but is it any good? Right, that's always the million dollar question. Does all this efficiency mean you're sacrificing actual performance? Well, let's check out the benchmarks. And here's that headline number again, a 70 plus percent drop in RAM requirements. And I wanna be super clear, this isn't some minor optimization. This is a massive leap. We're talking about running powerful enterprise grade AI on machines that would have just choked on a traditional model a year ago. All that raw efficiency translates directly into speed. We're talking up to twice as fast for inference. But here's the really wild part. Unlike transformers that tend to slow down as you pile on the work, Granite's throughput actually accelerates as workloads increase. It's basically built to thrive under pressure. So the efficiency is there, but how about that raw performance? Well, even this tiny one billion parameter model is putting up some seriously competitive numbers. An 82 on ILF Fable means it's great at following instructions. A solid 50 on BFCL shows it can handle complex tool calling. And a 73% pass rate on human eval for code generation, that is really, really good for a model this size. This thing is absolutely punching above its weight class. 
All right, so the theory is solid, the performance is there. So the next logical question is, how do you actually get your hands on this and start building with it? Let's talk deployment. For any serious enterprise deployment, trust is non-negotiable, and IBM has clearly thought this through. You've got the permissive Apache 2.0 license, which means it's ready for commercial use. It's the first open model family to get this ISO certification for AI management. They even cryptographically sign the checkpoints so you can verify the model's authenticity. These are the details that really matter when you go to production. And the best part for developers? They've made it incredibly straightforward to get started. The models are available pretty much everywhere you'd expect them to be. Hugging Face, Alama for local use, Docker, NVIDIA NIM, you name it. It's designed to slot right into the workflows you're already using. And of course, for teams that want that fully managed end-to-end -end solution, the models are also available directly through IBM's own WatsonX.ai platform. This gives you that whole enterprise-grade environment with extra guardrails and features like IP indemnity. So let's step back for a second. What's the big picture here? Because this really doesn't feel like just another model release. This feels like a signal, a potential shift in the fundamental direction of the entire AI industry. What we're seeing today is just the first step. The roadmap shows a clear commitment to this efficient architecture. We're gonna see thinking variants for tougher reasoning tasks later this year. And by the end of 2025, even smaller nano models built for the constraints of edge devices. They're clearly all in on this approach. And this quote from the team at IBM really just crystallizes their entire philosophy. The focus is squarely on smaller, efficient, and accessible models. It's not that they're abandoning larger models completely, but they are making a very conscious choice not to let the bigger is better arms race define their strategy. Which brings us to our final and maybe most critical question. With hyper-efficient models like Granite 4.0 proving they can deliver serious enterprise-level performance, are we finally at a tipping point? Is the industry ready to pivot away from just a relentless pursuit of scale and move towards a future of smarter, more practical, and more accessible AI? That's a question I think every developer and CTO should be thinking about right now.